Today we're checking out the EG4 heat pump and this is the first mini split on the channel that can be run off of AC 120 volts or DC without a battery or an inverter. It can run 100% off of a solar array. And that's what these wires are for right here. So you can either run it off of the grid by itself if you don't have any solar or you can run it off of a solar panel array about 1200 to 2000 watts. So three to four panels um, or you can run it off of solar and the grid at the same time. So it does like a solar assist function automatically. So at night, if there's no solar, it will run directly off the grid. And then when there's actual sunshine, it will run it off of your solar array. Now this mini split has been running since Thanksgiving and I haven't had a single issue. And there's some cool features that this has that Mr. Cool and other mini splits do not have. First off, the app actually shows you how much power is coming from solar and how much is coming from the grid. Right now we're running entirely off of solar. There is absolutely no power coming in from the grid. And it also logs the historical electricity data. So all night it was running off the grid and now that there's sunshine, it's running completely off of solar. Now the installation of this system was quite simple. We have the solar power DC conductors right here. We have the AC input right here. Then this cable goes to the inside unit. Now when installing this unit, you have to use a vacuum pump with some adapters to evacuate these lines before you open up these valves for the refrigerant to go through this line set. And it's very easy to do. I recommend any DIY type person to watch the videos on YouTube and then learn how to install these because it's quite simple. After you do it once, one time you can do it very quickly as many times as you want or you can hire a professional and EG4 will not do any warranty claims if it's not technically installed by a professional. So if you don't know what you're doing and you're scared, you should have an HVAC technician do this final step. You can do everything else in the install, but wait until the HVAC tech comes for him to attach these lines and to evacuate them with a vacuum pump. Now the solar input, you want to have a high enough voltage so this MPPT can actually run this DC compressor. And the best voltage is at least 100 volts. If you have 80 volts or 70 volts, you're going to have zero watts coming in from the solar array, no matter how sunny it is or no matter what. You need to have a high enough voltage so that this MPPT can run the compressor. So idealistically, you need at least three panels in series. Um, at most, you should have five or six panels in series, depending on the voltage. A few days ago, I had 2000 watts connected, and the moment the sun came up, or if it's cloudy or something, it's running this 100%. But that array was a bit overkill. So right now, I only have 1200 watts connected, and I have those on the floor in a corner of my backyard. And that's the perfect amount of solar to offset what this uses when the sun is out. Because you don't want to have so many solar panels connected that you're wasting electricity. Electricity. You could actually use that for your off-grid system and store that in your batteries. But having a small array for just your heat pump actually works really well. And the efficiency is higher. Instead of going into a battery and then back out through an inverter, you're powering a DC compressor directly. So you get an efficiency boost with that alone. Now my house is 4,000 square foot and I don't use most of it. I bought this house mainly for the yard for these videos in my workshop. So heating my house is very easy because the only place I'm actually at is the kitchen. And this pumps enough heat to keep the kitchen warm. So when I'm in the house, I'm plenty warm and I don't need to turn on the natural gas furnace. So even though this is a 12K mini split, it's plenty for what I need for myself. So when you're installing one of these, you have to think, where do I actually need the heat? If you and your family is only hanging out in one spot of the house, you could easily lower your bill drastically by putting a mini split heat pump. Now this is 1200 watts of solar that's running that mini split. You could use more like I said, but because this is Vegas and it's sunny every day, this actually gets the job done. Now another option that most people are probably going to choose is a Mr. Cool mini split. And we've covered these previously on the channel and I've actually installed quite a few now. They're very easy to install because they have pre-charged lines. And that means you do not need a vacuum pump, you don't need a professional, and you don't need any special tools of any kind. The installation time for this Mr. Cool is about half that of the other mini split that runs directly off of solar. And I also use this to heat and cool my house just like the other mini split. And this one's powered directly from my off-grid solar power system in my workshop. 
Now something to know is this is not very solar specific. If you're running it off grid with an inverter, it works great, but the other one is more efficient. When you have a solar rate connected directly to a solar charge controller that's running a DC compressor, more of that energy is actually gonna go to heating and cooling than it is for this. And you can monitor and track that data on the app for the other mini split. You can't do that with the Mr. Cool mini split. Now because these lines are charged, you cannot cut them and make them shorter. So you have to coil the excess lines next to the unit and it looks pretty tacky. On the other mini split, you can cut them, flare them, and then put them directly on there and it looks perfect every time. But it does take more work. This only takes minutes. And even though it looks bad, anybody can do this in minutes and it will work perfectly fine like this. Now this heat pump is not solar specific and it's not a Mr. Cool, but it works great. It's pretty cheap and it was very easy to install if you know how to use a vacuum pump. A lot of people are scared of installing these mini splits, but all you have to do is go on YouTube and watch a few videos on how to use the vacuum pump. I'm not recommending you do that because you should always have an HVAC professional do it, but if you see how easy it is, anybody can do it. It's not hard at all, especially if you have the right tools. Or you could hire a professional to teach you how to do it because again, it's not hard. If you watch a couple YouTube videos videos and you watch a professional do it, I'm pretty sure that you could figure it out. But again, I cannot recommend that on my channel, so I'm just giving you options. Now this array would actually work great for the solar specific mini split. So this is sold by Signature Solar. If you put four panels on it, this would give you the perfect voltage and the perfect output to run that solar specific mini split. And it looks pretty nice. I like this thing. Now living off grid, the two most difficult things are running an electric vehicle and heat pumps during winter. That is the most difficult thing ever and I have a massive battery bank just for that reason alone. The rest of the year is very easy, but running these 24 seven and heating your home off of electricity only and running a, an electric car is so difficult. So oversizing your array and getting larger battery bank than necessary proves very useful at these times. And usually this pulls about 19 to 24 kilowatt hours through the course of a day if I have it at the maximum settings. Because remember, this is heating up pretty much my whole house. I do not run that Mr. Cool all the time. That's typically during um, summer. And that saves me at least $100 per month, which is pretty cool. Something else is if you have an older home that's not insulated or you have single pan windows, you're gonna have a bad time if you're trying to live off grid. This house is very energy efficient because there is a massive amount of insulation and every single window has the inert gas or whatnot so that there's not as much heat transfer. I suggest everyone using a heat camera and look at their house, see where the heat is escaping and figure out how you can mitigate that and then add a heat pump after, and then try to run it off of solar, and then you'll be able to reduce your bill quite drastically. And with my electric vehicles, I don't have to pay for gasoline. So the total amount that I save every month is pretty substantial if you think about it. Now obviously I live in Las Vegas and it's very sunny here, so it's very easy for me to do my solar projects and that's why I moved here. If you live in a dark, cold, cloudy place, I recommend you leave. Um, it's not good for your brain. Um, humans did not evolve in those climates. So yeah, get to a warmer place and then you can run all your stuff off solar. That's pretty much it. I hope you liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.